When Venati arrived in Pade Are from Kajumbalur, the water resources of the Chola country left her in a sea of amazement. There is no river on the side of Kajumbalur, there are lakes. During the rainy season, the lakes are full of water. Dry during summer. There are no such rivers, canals, and sluices where the water touches both banks and flows in eddies and eddies. In the birthplace of Vanathi, you can't see the lakes blooming with lotus and lotus water. Vanati would sit and look at all these things. She enjoys seeing pearly drops of water running around on the lotus leaves sheltering the fish in the pond. She becomes ecstatic when she sees lotus flowers and lily flowers swirling around the trees and swaying them. Once Vanati and Kuntha had gone to Thirunalam, this time giving name to Thirunalam as Konari Rajapuram, on the invitation of Sembian Mathavi. Stayed at the Vasantha mansion. Sembian Mathavi and Kuntha would often start talking about the stories of the Saivite gurus and the devotion dripping from their scriptures. Vanati has no trouble listening to all that. More than that, she was more interested in going to the gardens surrounding the spring palace and listening to the sweet songs of the birds and the pleasurable humming of the dark blue beetles that circled around the blooming lotus flowers in the pond. The river which was still going to one side of the mansion was running in a whirlwind, she was also very interested to see the beautiful crimson Kadamba flowers swirling in those swirls. Isn't it possible to see such scenic views in Kajumbalur? One day the daughter of the farmer and the younger Prati Kuntha were talking about something interesting. As Vanati approached them, the younger brat said, Vanati. You go to the garden. I'll be back in a little while. Said. Vanati jumped and ran with joy. She wandered around the garden for a while and went to the lotus pond. There were many trees growing on the bank of the lake, hiding the sky. Among them was a tall and spreading elm tree. The cherry blossoms were falling and completely covering the ground. Their fragrance wafted through the garden. Vanati sat on a big root under that tree. She was leaning against a tree and looking up and down. The melodious songs of birds were pouring into her ears like nectar. A feeling of pleasure that she had never experienced till that day appeared in her heart. That inner joy often erupted and spread all over her mane. Until that day Vanati had never dreamed that life could be so blissful. From under the tree, the river flood was visible in the distance. Every now and then she would catch a glimpse of the flowing river through the gaps in the trees. Once, a boy was seen swimming in the river. The wild sight of his golden mane floating half in the water and half on top of the crimson stream captivated her heart. See you. What's wrong with someone focusing on a teenager's appearance? That thought made Vanati, who had the qualities of Nana and Madam as her inborn wealth, very shy. Against her inner control, her eyes darted to the river twice again. Vanati was angry with him. She thought whether to get up and leave. Then another event caught her fancy. Near where she sat, she looked up to hear the chirping of baby birds overhead. What she saw there filled her with pity and horror at the same time. There was a bird's nest in a branch that split like a slingshot. Some of the chicks were sticking their heads out. They squealed screech in a soft voice. The sound was mixed with fear, a warning of danger, and a pitiful appeal for asylum. Vanatha's ears heard that they were mixed like that. A wild cat was climbing a branch near the joint. Slowly it was approaching the nest. Seeing that, Vanati said, Alas! Alas! She shouted. In the next moment what? What? A voice asked. The sound of someone's footsteps was heard. Vanati looked that way. She knew that it was the boy who had been swimming in the flood earlier and was running ashore. At the same time two big birds came from somewhere. Around the nest they circled screaming Karabura. They must be the mother and father of the chicks. Vanathi realized that they must have come in a hurry to save the chicks. Both are birds with long noses. These are similar to woodpecker birds. A bird circled high around the nest. Another squealed as it approached the cat and poked it with its nose. The bird cannot do anything to the cat. If caught in the cat's mouth, the next moment it should go into its stomach. Yet the bird fought so hard to protect her chicks. Vanathi, who had lost her mother and father at a young age, 
was deeply depressed by the scene. The cat stood still for a moment and then suddenly stretched out one of its forelegs towards the nest. The chicks also touched one end of the nest. Vanatha screamed again. By this time, the boy had approached. Vanati was too shy to see him up close. He did not come to reply, I didn't get up to talk. By signal he pointed to the bird's nest. Until then, he was thinking that there was some danger to that woman. He looked up at the place Vanati had pointed to. Again he smiled at Vanati. His look and smile softened Vanatha's heart and made her forget even the plight of the chicks. But the boy immediately ran away and stood right below the tree branch where the bird's nest was. He shook the wild cat. It looked down and looked down. Be a wicked cat. Saying that, he picked up a stone from the ground and threw it quickly. The stone missed the cat and hit a branch next to it. The cat immediately jumped to another branch, from there to another thick tree and then disappeared. But in the meantime, another tragedy happened. Didn't the cat pull one leg over the edge of the bird's nest? So the nest, which had been swaying a little, was greatly disturbed by the speed of the boy's stone hitting the tree branch, and little by little the nest slipped from the cup of the branch. If it had slipped completely, the kittens would have fallen to the ground. Fortunately one end of the nest was gripping the branch. The nest hung down and swung with the chicks in it. Chicks' lives also fluctuated. The woodpeckers circled the nest where the chicks were, screeching more than before. If the wind blows too fast, the nest will fall to the ground. If the chicks survive falling from such a height, it is Duralaband. The boy thought for a moment. At first it seemed that he intended to jump up the tree. He was seen to have changed his mind in the next moment. Looking at Vanati, he said, Lady. Come here. If the nest falls down, catch it by the hem of your sari. Here I will be back in a moment. After saying that, he ran away. He came back in a very short time as he said. But now he is not walking. He came riding on an elephant. Vanati somehow knew what he was going to do. So from there she reached the steps of the lotus pond. She sat down a few steps and watched what the boy on the elephant was doing. When the elephant came under the tree, it stopped. On its back, the boy carried the bird's nest with his hand and placed it carefully on the branch in front of him. The mother bird and the father bird now screamed louder than before. But Kuthukaladwani now seemed to have the upper hand in the clamor. The boy then turned and looked around. Woman! Where have you gone? He shouted. Vanatha was deeply moved and remained silent. The boy got down from the elephant. Then he looked around again. Vanatha thought something in her mind. The memory amused her greatly. Unknowingly, she laughed. She laughed loudly. After hearing that, the boy came to the steps of the pond. Looking at Vanati, he said, Girl! Why are you laughing? What has happened now that you are laughing so loudly? He said. When the young man's voice fell on Vanatha's ears, her heart swelled again as before, the shyness increased even further. Unable to look up at him, she was looking here and there. Woman! Why are you smiling? Won't you tell me? The boy asked again. Vanati strengthened her heart and said, Nothing. I laughed thinking that you are a great hero. You came on an elephant to fight a cat, didn't you? She asked. Hearing that, the boy also laughed. Woman! Is that a cat? I was afraid it was a tiger after hearing the cry you made. He said that. By this time Vanati had gained courage, her shyness also decreased. Aha! Uh -huh. Really? Why should you be afraid of a tiger in the Chola country where the tiger flag is flying? Are you a Pandya country? She said. Hearing that, the boy's face brightened a little more than before. Woman! I am not a foreigner, I belong to this Chola country. I have mounted an elephant and gone to other battlefields. Who are you? Which village girl? Are you a big-mouthed girl? He said. Elephant! Speak respectfully. Who am I to you? 
why do you ask about it? Vanatha said. Well then I didn't ask. Sounds like a big fat lady. Going. After saying that, the boy got up and went upstairs. Vanati again said in a playful tone of voice, Elephant. Elephant. Are you going to take me on your elephant? She said. Okay, I'll take it. What will you pay me? He asked. Wage? I will tell my great-grandfather and get you a job in the Kajumbalar Palace. If not, I will make you the commander of the elephant army. Vanatha said. Oko. Are you the princess of Kajumbalar? Said the boy. His face, which had been glowing so far, now shriveled. The smile disappeared, eyebrows are raised. Why? Is the princess of Kajumbalar so high? Shouldn't she ride on your elephant? Vanatha said. No, no. There are so many elephants in the Kajumbalar palace courtyard, so many elephant guards. What am I for? After saying that, the boy said to leave and walked away. Vanatha waited for a while to see if he would look back. But he walked away without looking back and mounted the elephant. This incident left a deep impression on Vanati. Often it came to her mind. Every time I remembered the appearance of the elephant, the blooming face and the sweet voice, I felt an unknown feeling of pleasure in my heart. Every time I thought of him climbing on an elephant to save the baby birds, I laughed without knowing her. She smiled to herself. Then she felt ashamed for it. Anger grew on his face whenever he thought of the elephant's arrogance and how he had shrunk his face as soon as he heard the word Kajumbalar. All in all, I was often reminded of that elephant. Even the suspicion that this was wrong was troubling her. There was talk in the palace that Pawnee's son Selvar was coming to Tyrunalam to see his daughter. Like all the ladies of the palace, Vanati was eager to see the prince who was the apple of Kolonadu's eyes. The opportunity did not come easily. It was rumored that the prince had arrived, but he never entered the palace. Vanadio, full of happiness by nature, did not want to take the opportunity and see him like other female friends. On the day when the prince left Tyrunalam, he happened to stand on the top floor of the palace and see Vanatha Pani's lover. He was traveling on an elephant. If Vanati couldn't believe her eyes, that's not a formal word. How can Vanati believe her eyes when she sees that the prince who is admired by the state is a Romas Hivarman, who dares to laugh and laugh at him, thinking that he is an elephant? Later, she made sure to ask the girls next to her several times. It is impossible to describe the shame and heartache she suffered due to this. She laughed on one side when she thought of what she had said that the one who was born to rule the world would be appointed the head of the elephant stable of Kajumbalar Palace. At the same time, tears came to his eyes. She regretted her stupidity. Then the reason his face shrunk was because he called out to him, Elephant. She believed that it was called. He would have thought of himself as a woman who had none of the qualities of Nana, Madam, Fear, and Cultivation. When she thought of this, Vanati's heart felt no measure of pain. She even thought many times that she might die by falling into a river or a pond. Ilay Aprati tried several times to tell Kundave about the crime she had committed. But there was no courage, I didn't wake up. If the prince himself had told Kundeva to Devi, she would have asked herself. Kundeva Devi decided that the prince had not told her because she did not listen. This thought gave her some comfort in the midst of so much heartache. She thought that one day she would give up her life after personally apologizing to Pani Selvar. But he didn't have the courage. After going to Padayara, she ran and hid whenever she thought she might get a chance to meet the prince. She thought that she would rather give up her life than go before the prince. Unaware of what happened in Tyrunalam, the young girl and her friends said, This girl is so shy. They were just surprised. They thought this was due to her fearful nature. Vanati soon learns that there is another important reason why Pawnee's suitor dislikes her. As many people believed that Prince Aromas Hivarman was once a world emperor, so too in her birthplace. So Vanatha somehow knew that her great father had planned to get her married to Aromas Hivarma. 
Kundave Devi's other female friends would often gossip that Bhutavikramakesari had sent her to Padayara with that purpose in mind. Sometimes they will tell and show favor to Vanati. That's why you say you won't go before the prince. Don't we know your treachery? They say these words fell flat on Vanati's ears. One day Pani's Selvar left for the war in Elam while Vanati's young heart was in turmoil. On that day, it was arranged that all the female friends from the palace would greet him with auspicious lamps in their hands. Vanati could not deny that he could not come even this time. She also felt the desire to see the prince who was going to war once. She had the power to apologize to him with her facial expressions and soft language even if she didn't open her mouth. But the opposite of what she expected happened. When the prince came near and looked at her, Vanatha fainted put out the lamp and fell on the ground and fainted. Readers know what happened after this, don't they? As Vanathi approached Thirunalam, who was floating in the river, the above incidents came and went in her mind one after the other. She had realized that Pani's lover also had sympathy for her. He has conveyed it through the younger Brady and in person. But from time to time there was a stumbling block that prevented his love from being perfected. She knew what it was. The impasse was that the prince believed that they were trying to tie her around his neck in hopes of becoming emperor one day. Thus he was not without reason to believe. Vanati's great father has spoken about this many times. Why? Ilaya Prati Kundave Devi herself was involved in that conspiracy. It was known to many others. Didn't even the runner girl Pungajali make fun of it? Therefore, it is not surprising that the thought stayed in the prince's mind and was an obstacle to his love. But when the prince gets to know the vow made by Vanati a little while ago, the impasse will be removed, won't it? Does he happen to know that? What if you told him yourself? Wow amazing! If he stands in front of you, he will shut his mouth. When you thought of him as an elephant, you gave him the name of Vayadab Pen by talking about this good fortune. After that you could not look him in the face and open your mouth to speak? Orphan heaven! The next time you see the prince, don't be so mean. Be bold and say what's on your mind. Say boldly, even if you ride a lion, I will not ride it. I have vowed to do so. If you are just an elephant and take me with you on an elephant, I will consider it more than life in heaven. All right. But will there be occasion to say so? Where will this flood take me? I will die without reaching the shore. Not one day will be like that. You can see the shore. The crown casket of Tyrunalatu Vasantha Mansion is visible. Aha! Isn't it like yesterday when the prince came on the elephant and saved the baby birds and talked to me sweetly, up here? What is this? That's an elephant. That's why it's an elephant. How carelessly the elephant treads the rapids of the flood and moves like a hill. The shore has risen. Heading west along the shore. Who is sitting majestically on the elephant? Maybe, Si Chi. What crazy idea is this? Why does the prince come alone on an elephant like this? If I once thought that a prince on an elephant was an elephant, then should I doubt that any elephant I saw could be a prince? What ignorance! However. Even if he is just an elephant, maybe he can help me? Can't I be washed away from this pit, from this great flood? If I tell you who I am, you can take me on an elephant and take me to Pani's lover, won't you? When such a thought appeared, Vanati said, Elephant! Elephant! Called Gui. Whether it did not fall into his ear, or whether he did not aim when it fell, is not known. The elephant does not stand still, there is no looking back for elephants. The elephant's pace was fast. Very soon the elephant and the elephant disappeared around a bend in the river bank. While Vanati was thinking about this disappointment, another very frightening thought came to her mind. The car roof suddenly seemed to start spinning at high speed. Yes, yes. The river flood had reached high speed there. The banks of the river and the thick roots of the gigantic trees that grew along its banks were rushing towards her. The roof is bound to collide with the roots of the odom trees. Upon impact, the powder crumbles and sinks into the water. Then what is his fate? 
Can you survive and get ashore? Can you get caught in loops and get hit by tree roots? Alas! What is this? Among the roots of those trees, a terrible crocodile is slitting its mouth. Is that a real crocodile? Or a toy? Or the delusion of my soul? Here the shore is near. The roof is about to crash into the tree roots. Vanati closed her eyes tightly. Mother! Durga Parms Wary! You are the fate of this fatherless orphan girl. Take me at your feet. She prayed that.